right? Is um pull it up here. Is napach, right? Which is the same Hebrew word that was used in Genesis two and seven, and we found out that this word actually. Let me let me just bring it out, right? It's, it's simpler to um to see, right? John twenty. We brought this out yesterday, but for those of us who didn't see the video for this, you know, just a little bit of um recap. Right, so this is John 20 and 22. It says, And when he had said this, this is the Messiah speaking. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Right, so the disciples weren't literally dead, right? They were spiritually, you know, asleep, right? And he breathed on them, right? And they received the Holy Spirit, meaning they lived spiritually, right? And we went into the, um, the lexicon of this word, he breathed on them. And it was telling us that the Greek word here is used, used is employed nowhere else in the New Testament, but is the very same one used by the Septuagint translators of Genesis 2 and 7, right? Showing you that, you know, as we brought out yesterday, that um, when the most I breathed on Adam, he gave him wisdom and understanding of the law, statutes, and then, um, judgments, right? So this, wor this word here in Genesis 2 and 7, Let's bring it out and show you that it's the same one in, um, in Ezekiel 37, right? Here we go. And he breathed on Adam, breathed into his nostrils, and it's Napak, right? Napak. And here in Ezekiel 37 and 9, right, breathe, same word, Napak, right? Showing you that it's it's the same is the same way Yahushai breathed on the disciples and they got the Holy Spirit and they came to life. It's the same way that the Most High caused the wind to blow and or to breathe on the um on the the um the spiritually dead Israelites, right? And we came to life, right? So, for for example, when we um when we go out there, or when we watch the videos of our elders, for those of us who woke up that way. You know, we, we heard the words over the over the computer, right? And that spirit, right, which is the Mosai spirit as well, entered into us, right? And we um we received life, right? That same breath that that passed through all creation, right? That is the same breath that comes from the Mosai that caused us to to wake up, right? Which is that wisdom, right? Now, just one last scripture to show um that there's. There's a little bit of a, a, a difference b between um, literal breathing, as in oxygen, and then the, um, the spirit of the Most High, right? Because you have um, two different types of living. You can you can live carnally, right? But you can be spiritually dead, right? Which is what the um, dry bones were, spiritually dead men, right? Now, the scripture here in Job gives you a difference between the two, right? This is um, Job 27 and 3. It says, all the while my breath is in me, right, talking about his literal breath, which is, you know, the oxygen, the carbon dioxide, respiration, right, and then it goes on to say, and the spirit of God is in my nostrils, right, and the Hebrew word there for spirit is wawak, right, which we are, which meant breath in Psalms 33 and 6, which meant breath in um, Ezekiel 37, and in Job 12, right? So Job showing you the difference between the two, right? Although while my breath is in me, meaning my literal breathing, right? And the spirit of God is in my nostrils, meaning the, the spirit, the, the, the breath of the Most High, right? So this is one last scripture that I really wanted to bring out, right? No, I, I know I said one last scripture a while ago, but you know, so much comes out. But let me see if I can find this here. I'm going to need a, a pocket for here. Bear with me just a second. One second. Alright, here we go. Alright, this is um this is one of my favorite scriptures. This is Wisdom of Solomon 7 verse 24. It says, 
for wisdom is more moving than any motion. She passes through she passes and goes through all things by reason of her pureness. Right, talking about what? And it tells you in the next in the next um, verse. It says, verse twenty five, for she's the breath and the power of God, and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, can no defiled thing fall into her. Right. So, wisdom, which is the breath of the Most High, right, is what causes creation to live, to exist, right, to happen, to become, right. So, wisdom is more moving than an emotion because she's the spirit. She's the breath of the Most High, right. Going back to um to the meaning of the of the name of the Most High, Yahweh, right? He is or he is he exists or literally properly he breathes or he that breathes, right? He that causes the creation to live, to exist, right? So you know that that I think that basically covers it. You know, if anything else does come out, you know, I'll be sure to um to do another video, but just to recap you know, the, the Most High literally is the one that breathing, it's the, it's the, he's the only one that's, that exists, right, so, so everything else exists because of his existence, basically, right, so everything is, exists on his breath, his breath is in all creation, right, so with that, you know, I hope you brothers learned something, you know, until next time, I say Shalom.